part 4, page 24. To you who are out of your mind trying so hard to attain peace of mind. The Buddha Dharma is immeasurable and unlimited. How could it ever be made fit, made to fit into your categories? No matter, no matter what you are grasping for, it's limited. In any case, only things for ordinary people can be grasped. Grasping for money, clinging to health, being attached to position and title, grasping for satori. Everything you grasp only becomes the property of an ordinary person. Letting go of ordinary people's property, that's what it means to be a Buddha. When peace of mind only means your personal satisfaction, then it's got nothing to do with the Buddha Dharma. The Buddha Dharma teaches limitlessness. That which is measureless has to be accepted without complaint. The Buddha Dharma is of limitless breadth. But when you try to hold it still, you have lost it. We are not talking here about dried cod, living fish have no fixed form. When you try to grasp the Buddha Dharma, you only end up constipated. You mustn't limit it either. The Buddha Dharma is beyond all limits. It's said, praise the Buddha who transcend all things. So don't look around as if you are hang up, hung up on something. The expression easy practice, igyo, doesn't mean that it's easy for someone who's still on this who is still on this side. The strength of the other, tarak taraviki, refers to that which goes beyond you as an individual. Only a Buddha and a Buddha can penetrate it completely. A person who isn't a Buddha himself can't accept the Buddha Dharma. You lack peace of mind because you're running after an idea of total peace of mind. That's backwards. Be attentive to your mind in each moment, no matter how unpeaceful it might seem to be. Great peace of mind is realized only in the practice within this unpeaceful mind. It arises out of the interplay between peaceful and unpeaceful mind. A piece of mind that is totally at peace would be nothing more than something ready-made. Real peace of mind only exists within unpeaceful mind. When this satisfaction is finally accepted as dissatisfaction, <coughs> peace of mind re reigns. It's the mind of a person who had been deaf to criticism when he finally listens to others talking about his mistakes. It's the mind of a person who, naked and begging for his life, suddenly dies peacefully. It's the mind of a person who has suddenly lost the beggar, who had been pulling at his sleeve, relentlessly following him around everywhere. It's the mind after the flood in which the makeup of piety has washed away. There isn't any world in which everything is right, and still everyone is wandering around in search of it. But what good does it do to wander around endlessly or to cry yourself to sleep in desperation? That's backwards. It's a matter of sitting immov immovably in the world and not wandering around. Peace of mind means not running after anything. Words like arriving or satori shouldn't refer to intellectual understanding. They mean being unmoved, no matter what happens in life and in death. Many believe peace of mind means freeing themselves from suffering in order to be always, always be happy. That's mistaken. However great our suffering may be, the answer isn't to thrash around with your hands and feet. It's to stay calm. If you want to observe the state of a person who doesn't have any peace of mind, look at a mouse in a trap. It thrashes around with all of its might. A man sees it and throws it to the cat for food. And the cat eats it with a pleasure. This is how you can understand that thrashing around with your hands and feet is a waste of energy. Instead, sit peacefully in Zazen. How could a human being ever have peace of mind? The real question is, 
what you are doing with this human life. What are you doing with a stinking sack of flesh? That's the issue. In the Buddha Dharma, the ordinary person and Buddha aren't two different creatures. Peace of mind isn't about sitting there like a bump on a log. The Buddha Dharma is realized through practice. It's put into effect by the body. That means that Zazen is all about the correct tension and placement of muscles and ligaments. Practice means to practice an approach to life with Zazen as a measure. Wherever this practice is found, peace of mind is fully actualized. The practice is our comportment in every aspect of our lives. Only when you pull the cord in the deep autumn fog with all of your heart does the bell sound in the rice paddy on the mountain. You call Buddha's name and want to go to paradise as well. What a waste of effort. Calling Buddha's name is already going to paradise. It isn't necessary to produce superfluous thoughts on, on top of that. You don't have to call out Buddha's name and, addition, and in addition make an effort to get into Nirvana. Tokuon writes, Namu Amida Butsu. Simply saying it is enough. What's essential is simply to do simply to do what we do, whether we attain peace of mind or not. This goes for reciting Amida Namu Amida Butsu as well. To you who are out of your mind trying so hard to attain peace of mind. I selected some sayings I want to talk about. The first one, maybe it's only one, I think. It's one. I choose the one saying. Saying is, words like arriving or satori shouldn't refer to intellectual understanding. They mean being unmoved, no matter what happens in life and in death. Many believe peace of mind means freeing themselves from suffering in order to always be happy. That's mistaken. However great our suffering may be, the answer isn't to thrash around with our hands, with your hands and feet, it's to stay calm. If you want to observe the state of a person who doesn't have any peace of mind, look at a mouse in a trap. It thrashes around with all of its might. A man sees it and throws it to the cat for food. The cat eats it with a pleasure. This is how you can understand that thrashing around with your hands and feet is a waste of energy. Instead, sit peacefully in Zazen. So, yeah, when we sit in Zazen, uh, we see the busyness of our minds and the ongoing complaining. At least that's what I experience. Um, this, the, the last session, for example, was very hard for me. It was, was a big inner turmoil and... And I read uh, Sawaki saying, and this state in my mind with the mouth like moving and thrashing around, and Sawaki says, just don't move, just leave it and just don't move. And so it was a nice reminder, like you have this inner turmoil and just to just be there and try to, to accept all this. I mean, you could easily stand up and thrashing around with your arms and hands, but you don't do it, you just stay with the posture. Um, and other sayings here in this scepter, he says, uh, when and when this satisfaction is finally accepted as dissatisfaction, peace of mind reigns. Great peace of mind is realized only in the practice within this unpeaceful mind. So you sit there, for example, session, and you feel all this dissatisfaction and all these yeah, difficulties, feelings, pain, and in peace of mind you can only reach when you just be there and just accept all these things coming and hopefully they go, but you don't know. First they are there and you just stay calm. Yeah, session is always always a challenge. Mm. Yeah, for me it seems like you sit there and whatever you could imagine worse like feelings or so. 
like your body hurts, your mind, your thoughts, want, want to do something else. And it just like feels unbearable and you just sit there and you feel like, okay, this is session again. You sit here, you, you think you cannot bear it, but just stay here unmoved. It's a way of kind of, of accepting the, you think it's unbearable, you cannot accept it. How? So for me, that's kind of the session, like, like Zazen and even the pain, you cannot sit straight anymore. Uh, like for me, I cannot sit straight anymore sometimes. It's like, well, how, I don't know, how can I survive that here? Mm, yeah, the last one was especially, maybe because there was a little break in between. Mm. Yeah. And then you feel all this dissatisfaction when you sit, and then you think, okay, that's you have just to accept what's there, just think, just accept it, just accept it. But there is this resistance that don't don't want to accept this, and I don't know. I mean, it's the same. You don't want to. You don't like, for example, when you feel pain. So when you have when you put your hand in fire, you also don't want to keep your hand very long in fire because you know uh, it's it's it hurts. Uh, you you will you will damage your you will damage your so it's your, yeah, your hand. So it's kind of natural rea uh, reaction to pain uh, to want to go out of that. So I think for me also when I feel the pain, I try to accept it, but there is this resistance to it. That's the same resistance. That want to keep me alive, kind of. Uh, yeah. We want to keep the the ego, want to keep the self alive. But yeah, I don't know if I hurt myself in this uh, in this situation there right now. If I damage myself, or it's just a pain that when when I just go through it after it's okay, no worries. I don't know at that moment when I have the pain. I don't know, and I feel this resistance coming. This. I don't want to feel or I yeah I it's the same resistance that keeps us from dangerous situation outside I think it's kind of a natural like, like a natural uh, resistance coming and it's not so easy to just yeah to just accept that kind of I think there is this natural tendency to to go out and don't damage yourself. And it's also said that you cannot you cannot willingly do it. I don't know from so until also now I also so at some point I move a little bit um, until now. Even Dr. San says don't move. A little bit I move then I don't know it's so I think for myself okay I'm not at that point right now. I have to wait. I'm not. I'm not there yet. I don't know. I need. I don't know what kind of conditions. I'm not sure. So yeah, there's always this kind of this, I don't know, this natural resistance. I, I feel like. And then also, yeah, you try to accept it. Hmm. And this, this act of accepting the situation. Um, earlier in my life, I also I have I had a like maybe the beginning of twenties. I had very like depressive depressive uh, episodes in my life, uh, like after school. Uh, I wasn't sure where to go. My friends I were totally different. They went to different ways. Uh, I wanted to go out. Uh, I wanted to leave the family where I, I I didn't want to live with my parents anymore, but I didn't know what to do. Um, yeah, it was was beginning of twenties. Mm, was was a hard time, and uh, yeah, I was looking all around. What can <coughs> I do? Uh, maybe I need some help. I feel like very stressed out. This I don't know. I feel always like oh, I have to perform. I have to do. 
And I always have to prove myself to other people. You know? I have to fight for, for, for the life. And, and uh, yeah, I feel very depressed. And then I try different things like positive thinking, yoga, and also this mindfulness. And, and in the beginning, it was nice to do something else and to try to change yourself uh, to make you a better person. In the beginning, it worked out, this positive thinking, and I thought, oh, it's good, oh, great, I feel better, and I can actually work with the positive thinking. But then after two weeks, it didn't work, so and then <laughs> it, it happened. Okay, maybe it's because uh, I'm, not, I'm not so focused, I have to do more, I have to do it really much more, because I don't know why. So I tried more and more, and then it becomes something like I want to achieve with that. I want to become, and, and then I stressed myself to do it, to do it. Yeah, but it didn't didn't work out anymore. And then, then I just I just gave up. I gave up, and and at the point, and at at the point I gave up and accepted my situation. Suddenly I felt like, oh, it's not a problem here. <laughs> it's it's okay. And then I was like, oh, now I have the key. Now I, I just can accept it. I just have to accept it, and then. Yeah, but I try to accept it again, but then with the with the, with the thought in my head, uh, yeah, I want to have it better. So I want to accept my situation, but I want to have it better, and then it didn't work out anymore. Also, but I thought, okay, this accepting this that's that could be a way that's that's it feels natural, and you don't run after something. So yeah. Uh, and that's what we do also in session. There is these unbearable feelings and pain we have, and we just are there unmoved and try to bear it, try to accept everything. Yeah, but willingly, there is a, there is a, yeah, there is, yeah, there is a limit to willingly accept. Sometimes you have just to wait for for this point where it just comes naturally. This acceptance of when you have this pain and you don't think you can do it anymore. Okay, this was this chapter. And now the last chapter, Kiichi.